I'ma crush it. Call me. Hi, I'm Anthony Walker, the next Rick Seaback and your host of Unsung, our region's nonprofit online news magazine show. With football season kicking off, what better place to come to you from than Heinz Field on the north side? In this episode, Unsung sits down with Amazage and gets the scoop on how for profit companies might not be delivering all you want in a study abroad program. Then we hit the road with Squonk Opera for a fun music video. But first, Here's what's happening with our area nonprofits. Feeding America has declared September as Hunger Action Month to focus attention on the nearly 50 million people in this country who are food insecure. That means they are unable to reliably provide enough food for themselves or their families. That's one in six Americans. The need in this country is tremendous, but so is the impact that you can have. Please consider taking at least one personal action to fight hunger during September. You can volunteer, make a donation, hold a food drive, or just learn about hunger. In fact, there are any number of things you can do. Take a look at the Greater Pittsburgh Area Food Bank's 30 Ways in 30 Days calendar if you're looking for ideas, or you can create your own. Are your kids back in school? The Valley Points Family YMCA sent us along this health tip. For many families, going back to school means going back to a lunch outside of the home. Begin your family lunch planning now. Allow for a variety of foods to be packed up each morning or even better, the night before. Many children may not eat lunch until four or five hours after breakfast. Therefore, we need to provide a variety of healthy foods and include a rainbow of color. Include at least one serving of fruit and veggies when you pack lunch. Involve your children in the veggie and fruit selection at the market. Have them pick out two things that are red, two orange, and two that are yellow. Children enjoy making the choices and you'll win with the variety of fruits and veggies in the home. See how creative your family can get with their lunch menus this month and enjoy the added energy that moves everyone through the afternoon. More resources are available at vpfymca.org. Unsung loves to connect you with your neighborhoods. With Amajaje headquartered in Pittsburgh, your neighborhood commute just got a little further. They bring Pittsburgh to the world and the world to Pittsburgh. Let's take a look at the story. Our world's greatest currency is friendship. My name is Brandon Blash Cohen, and I'm the executive director of Amazaji Global Service Learning. Uh, this quote is actually from a very dear friend of mine uh, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago. I would never imagine that it would end up on the wall of the organization that I run, but an intern two years ago from our office randomly met a refugee in Zambia who had known my friend Eric. And this refugee kept telling our intern uh, the power that this quote had on his life. Uh, our intern returned to the office um, and told us the story and we felt it very appropriate to put on, on the wall here. Um, Amazaji, after all, is the Portuguese word for friendship and what we do and what we believe in is development through friendship and with that mantra in mind, we connect students and communities through worldwide service and learning. And that takes place in many forms, uh, everything from clean water initiatives in Tanzania to working on a health boat in Brazil. Um, we've worked with tutoring in the Navajo Nation and um, working on running an at-risk youth summer camp in Jamaica each year. We, we do have the status now. We are able to send a representative to the United Nations um, and uh, basically we collaborate with other NGOs to um, try to address some of these issues. So we're very honored uh, for that. Um, and we're honored to represent the city of Pittsburgh um, as well uh, in, in that domain. A lot of education majors or nursing majors that come back to the United States and say, you know, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher and then I uh, 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 taught uh, English as a second language in Tanzania and now I know for sure that's what I want to do with my life. I would say that our bread and butter though, uh, what we perhaps do best is um, what we call faculty-led programming. It's programming that is credit-bearing um, uh, and that we're able to inject some of our best practices in curriculum uh, in these programs. It's possible that you've heard of our, uh, the, the Water Walk for Women's Rights that we put on each year here in Pittsburgh. But to date, uh, we, we've helped to um, bring clean water to over a thousand individuals um, in the Caragua district of Western Tanzania. Um, and we've done this by raising funds here in Pittsburgh um, to, and um, uh, cultivating those funds into project material costs in Tanzania. And we build these very large 
uh, rainwater harvesting systems. Uh, we've also done outreach um, uh, in, in showing our friends there um, uh, uh, how this process works. So what we've seen is a lot of very large companies enter the, the sector um, and in a similar way that we see in the for-profit education system, um, uh, sort of use marketing practices to attract those students um, and uh, in our opinion sometimes not focusing on learning outcomes. And so we took a hard look at the, at the study abroad industry, at the global service learning industry and uh, we, we started to wonder if and how it could look better. How could it actually be mutually empowering? How, what could we do to give or grant or enable better professional development opportunities for our friends in these communities? So we looked around at our sites um, and we thought, wow, well, you know what? We already have a, mar we already have a model for fair trade learning. Um, and that model's in Jamaica where we have a, a wonderful partnership with an organization that has a, a collective of um, house mothers. These women host and feed our volunteers and get paid a certain amount each day. They then are asked to reinvest that money into a community pot and they meet every Thursday to vote on how those funds and are going to interact with those volunteers. It's become very empowering and to date we've injected hundreds of thousands of dollars into this community. We've had um, hundreds and hundreds of volunteers uh, visit the community and every year uh, uh, even more and more. Um, so at the end of the day, what we've done is recognize that there's a global value chain here. Just like coffee, when you have a farmer that's producing and getting very little out of it and you have a, the, the coffee corporate chain that's just putting a label on it and marketing it um, and making the largest percentage out of it, we have that same issue in study abroad. Um, and we all know some of the, uh, the stereotypes uh, of study abroad where students are going and um, uh, you know, they're, they're very much uh, just extracting learning. They're, 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 not, uh, they're being isolated oftentimes or with their own um, uh, uh, other fellow Americans. They're partying too much. Um, and so fair trade learning is a way to um, sort of go beyond that and um, uh, stay away from the predatory marketing, stay away from some of these same trends we've seen in the, uh, the larger uh, for-profit education industry and um, really get to the grassroots of, the, of it and offer our partners um, the respect that they deserve. The first step in uh, getting the word out on uh, fair trade learning is having conversations in uh, forums like this, right? Um, so it's only been a year since we've created this idea, um, but we're really working to uh, uh, talk to administrators, talk to faculty, and talk to students um, about this idea and about the fact that they have the option um, uh, to put pressure on their universities uh, to focus on mutually empowering experiences. The best way to find out about us is to visit our website at uh, www.amazaji.org. If you're a student, you can take a credit-bearing course with us. We have full semester programs, which are quite intense, actually, uh, and very unique. But we also have shorter-term programs. If you're an individual who has a particular skill or a graduate student, we place you in a, a, what's essentially a global internship abroad. Um, and if you are just a, a regular uh, guy in the neighborhood who is interested in uh, giving back and learning a little bit about a, an, another community and engaging in community-driven service, then we can organize programs uh, for you and we call those programs open group programs that most people can sign up for. Our communities are always looking for uh, in-kind material donations um, and pretty much anything goes from uh, we just had a, a large tent that we shipped to Jamaica to pens and, and markers and coloring books. Um, we of course are always looking for uh, financial uh, donations. Um, it, uh, it takes quite a bit to make these programs run um, and they are very transformative for both the students and the communities. Um, uh, and we're also looking for um, just general support here in the city of Pittsburgh. Um, we would love to uh, have a closer more formalized connections uh, with some of our communities. There's some places like Santarém, Brazil, where for 18 years now um, we have been uh, connecting hundreds and hundreds of Pittsburghers uh, to, uh, to, to this community. Um, and just recently uh, the, the financial climate's changed enough where we can now host our friends from Brazil here in Pittsburgh. Um, so we're looking to formalize those relationships, um, have larger uh, business relationships, nonprofit relationships, maybe even sister city type relationships in the future. 
This just might be the ultimate road trip. If you have not experienced Squonk Opera, get ready for a fun-filled mobile party. The Hoverla Ukrainian American Film Festival will take place on four Saturdays in October, beginning October 6th, at the Frick Fine Arts Auditorium in Oakland. The festival will introduce local residents to unique viewpoints and will showcase films with Ukrainian and Eastern European content from around the world that were never screened in the Pittsburgh area. Among the films are Mikhail Borganim's Land of Oblivion, Damien Clody's Orange Chronicles, Jacob Perus's The Other Chelsea, and Michaelo Elenko's Firecrosser. To provide an interactive environment for the audience, film screenings will also feature Ukrainian cuisine receptions and appearances by the film directors and producers, as well as discussions led by professors from the local universities. The seats are limited, so to ensure your seating, make your reservations online at ucowpa.org. The Giant Eagle Nutrition Team will kick off a monthly Health Smart Nutrition Education Series themed Lunch Anyone, Ideas for Back to School Meals. The September program will feature healthy recipes for school lunches and snacks, as well as provide ways to accommodate food allergies and gluten-free diets. Visitors will also be able to participate in hands-on meal planning and spend one-on-one -on -one time with registered dietitian Judy Dodd. Upcoming topics will focus on healthy snacking, diabetes awareness, and cold weather survival to help visitors stay active and eat smart indoors and out. Themes of future Health Smart sessions will be October 13th, Health Smart Snacking, November 3rd, Celebrating Diabetes Smart Choices, December 8th, Cold Weather Survival. For more information, visit Carnegie Science Center.org. And last but not least, the Andy Warhol Museum announces the opening of Warhol headlines on October 14th. Warhol headlines bring together works that the artist based largely on the headlines from the tabloid news. 
Warhol had a lifelong obsession with the sensational side of contemporary news media, and examples of his source materials for the works of art are presented for comparison, revealing Warhol's role as both editor and author. More information is available at warhol.org. Thank you for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghunvideo.org. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. I'm going to go see if they repaired the damage from Bain. So I said I'm going to crush it. Call me the golden boy because it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it. The flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me.